uh, snowy, right. Hi folks, hopefully you can see me. It's snowy, it's minus six, it was minus six, well, minus six on the van thermometer, thermometer when I pulled up and I'm on a snowy, in a snowy camp, I've got the, the kettle on, there's no wind, although it's really cold, it's not that cold, if that makes sense, because there's no wind outside. And the weather's been glorious all week, although it's not meant to stay like that, unfortunately, tomorrow. And I've come out, it's Friday night, it was a kind of last minute decision, I was kind of feeling a bit sorry for myself, it's been a tough week at work, um, and sometimes you, yeah, sometimes you just need to get out, it's, it's my, mountains are my therapy, so, you know, this is what cures me when, I've, when I'm feeling a bit sorry for myself. Um, so I've come out, I've uh, got a snowy peak and a snowy place to park the van and the mountains just behind me so it's, uh, yeah we'll see what tomorrow brings but yeah round about here I think the, the starry skies, I'll take some pictures and put them up to snow, it's a wonderful area and it's, uh, it's nice to be in the snow and the snow, the snow uh, tyres have made uh, easy work of the, of the snow but anyway that sounds like my kettle's boiling so I'm going to have some tea and I'll report back in a wee while. Right. Well, right. Wow, feel a bit better now. Had some tea. I was pretty knackered to be honest with you. It's about eight thirty. I was up at five this morning with my work, and uh, yeah, as I said before, hoping for some mountain therapy tomorrow. But I'm even feeling better now, having been out, and the stars are just amazing. So I'm going to go back into the van to sound just chill. I'll probably report. I'll probably report back in the morning. I do have some new gear that I need to try, and I'm hoping I'm going to get to try it tomorrow. So let's go back to the van. I'll chill out, and I'll say good night to snow, and I'll see you in a few hours. <laughs> Clear skies now. Let's get my stuff ready. Right, just about there. Oh, I tell you what, needing this coffee this morning. <laughs> the wind's picked up. It's a wee bit milder, and I'm on. I'm not far from the highest main road in Britain and um, in the Glen I'm in I'll reveal all in a minute but it's usually called something else <laughs> anyway I have got my new purchases here we go I don't think there's actually enough snow snowshoes by the way I don't know if there's actually enough snow there for them to be used but I'm going to shut up now I'm going to head up and see I've never been up this way I've been down it plenty of times but I've never come up this mountain the way I'm doing it today so I'm going to have this coffee and I'll report back when I'm on the trail I think it's definitely going to be a case of being bold and starting cold. Right, I'll report back in a minute. Oh, right, so where am I? I? can actually see way over behind the camera, a very busy road. And that's, I think it's the highest main road in the UK, it's A93. But where I am at the moment, it's a glen called Glen Beg. And as you go up and over, well, I can see a kestrel there hovering. Let me see, that's probably be too small on the camera. Let me just see if you can see it. No idea if you can see that or not. I don't know if I can zoom in. Oh, it's just flown off. Some sort of bird to prey up in the, the right. Anyway, uh, big <laughs> kestrel. Anyway, back to where I am, Glen Beg. And uh, it goes up and over, and there's a reason. I think today, because it's clagged in, I, I was going to do a circuit or a horseshoe of this route, but I'm not going to do that. I think it's just going to be an up and down because of the weather. And um, there's a reason why I won't go any further. Well, I could go further, but it might not be as nice walking as what this is going to be, because I don't expect to see another soul here, and you know that I like my solitude. Anyway, I've got a bit of an impasse here. There's a bridge, or a lack of a bridge here, so I need to sort of skirt my way down and find my way across the river, and then start heading uphill. So I'll report back in a wee while once I've found my way. 
across. <laughs> the bridge had been gone for a long, long time, so I skirted down to the wee burn and found a spot to cross. And in these conditions, I actually look for the, st the stones or the boulders just under the water, uh, as opposed to the ones poking out, because they can sometimes be covered in verglass and be a bit slippy. Anyway, successfully across the burn, and I started heading upwards. And the snow was getting a wee bit deeper as I headed up the oh, hill. Right, I am <laughs> slowly making my way up hill, and there's a lot of drifts now, so I might stop and get my <laughs> yeah, get my snowshoes on. It's really just in the drifts that I need them. But it's like this. There's probably not enough snow. Um, elsewhere, I could probably skirt around, but I want to try them out, so I'm going to get them out. You can see back down the A93 now, the car's whizzing up, it's quite quiet at the moment, but as I said, when we get to the top, I'll explain why that road is so busy, and more specifically, why it's busy today. Ooh, right, let's try these new snowshoes out. Right, that's the snowshoes on, let's, uh, let's see how they go. 20, I think they were £27 in the sale, got them um, discounted, just on Amazon. The name of them is Lixida, it's the same name as the wee, I think the same stove. The wee stove that I've got that I take camping is Lixida. Not expensive, but I don't use them that often, so hopefully they'll be alright. Let's go. Oh, this is lovely. I'm about to go into the white room and it's starting to ascend a bit more steeply, but uh, yeah, fantastic. It was a wildlife. I can't catch them on camera, but there's hundreds of uh, hares, uh, mountain hares with their winter coat on. And uh, yeah, like I said last night, I was feeling a bit down. So today's been a wee bit of mountain uh, therapy already. I feel a bit better uh, being out and about, even though the weather's pretty manky. It's, uh, it's very light snow, a wee bit of a breeze. But the, the snowpack isn't that soggy way just yet. I think it's going to take a wee while before the uh, temperature rises, which it is meant to do. So yeah, I am feeling mentally refreshed. <laughs> this has done its job already and the snowshoes have been pretty good um, coming up. And uh, I was sort of sinking up to my knees and my thighs in bits, so they have been worth their weight in gold so far. So let's crack on to the steeper part and I'll report back in a wee while. But halfway up, it's uh, relatively steep, it's not too steep. But yeah, as you can see, the clag's well and truly in, there's not much to see, so unless it clears, I will just be going up and back down. But even though the weather's not giving me the best views, it's still lovely to be out, getting a bit of exercise, feeling the, feeling the wind in my face. <laughs> so I'll report back when I get to the top and you'll be able to see what I was talking about and the reason why I've come up this way as opposed to the more popular way up this mountain. So let's shut up, let's get the camera away and let's crack on. It's, uh, it's tough work. It's almost harder in the snow. So let's go. The start of the walk up this hill is relatively gentle, but it soon goes up the the face or the ridge of the uh, the hill, and it starts to get a wee bitty steeper. And I certainly noticed that uh, that I was, you know, the, the slopes were getting steeper as I expected. And in addition to that, there was yeah, it was pretty much whiteout conditions in places, especially when there was continuous snow cover on the ground. It just couldn't make out any features at all. Right, Whew. it's getting just a wee bit too steep now for the snowshoes, so I'm, going to take, I'm actually going to take them off just now and put them back on once they get back down, I think. But, uh, they've been great so far, it's been nice to get them back on, they've worked quite well, not bad for a pair of cheapies, it's cheapy cheapy ones, so off for these to snow and I'll put them back on when we get lower down the mountain. So the other thing I'm going to do that's become apparent is the, uh, this. You don't notice, but there's like crampons in the bottom of these shoes, uh, snowshoes, and they've been helping on the way up. And having taken them off, it is quite icy here, so I'm going to put my, my normal crampons on um, for the remainder in 
get the ice axe out. I'm going to put my jacket and my goggles on as well because the wind's picking up. And yeah, it's just getting higher in the mountain really, so let's get safe. And then we'll crack on. Yeah. Right, so everything feels a bit more serious now. The wind's picked up, the, the visibility is five metres maximum. Ground's frozen, we're on steep, uh, steep terrain, so feels serious, I need to treat it seriously and act seriously, so let's go on and I'll report back when I get to the, uh, the summit. Let's go. So up I went, and where there was rocky outcrops like that part you've just seen, it was quite nice because you could make out the horizon. At other times it was just, you you were in the white room, it was complete whiteout conditions. Anyway, I stumbled my way up with my crampons on because it was really icy up here. And uh, before long I was approaching the summit of the mountain with its distinguishing features that you'll see in just a minute. Oh, not much space in here. <laughs> Usually have a wee seat in here. Uh, so this is the top of the hill and I'm on the Cairnwell, if you hadn't already guessed. And the reason that I came up the way I did was because beyond here, the usual way up is the ski development and given the hundreds and hundreds, maybe thousands of cars that went past me this morning, I know it's going to be busy that way. I'm a bit more exposed to the wind here, but yeah, it's certainly cold. And it's, um, some people would call this an easy mineral, but today, as I said earlier on, things felt, feel serious. I've still got back down, so my navigation's going to have to be spot on. And uh, yeah, without crampons and an ice axe, I wouldn't have got very far safely. So yeah, uh, I'm not going to hang around too long. Might get my bigger gloves out here, and then head back down. So I think I'm just going to head back, get back down. Look at all these formations, though, fantastic. Right, let's go. <laughs> get back down safely. In these conditions it's really important to make sure you're heading off the mountain in the right direction. I've been guilty in the past of just heading off in the direction I thought was <laughs> the correct direction and not realising until quite a fair bit down the mountain I was going the wrong way. But today the map was out constantly just to make sure I wasn't going off route. Literally can't see a bloody thing. You can see my feet and that is about proper, uh, proper white out now I think. Not very nice. Right, let's get down here safely. Oh. I was glad when I dropped a bit of altitude because the visibility got a bit better. The whiteout conditions really were horrendous. I couldn't see where I was putting my foot. I, I couldn't tell how steep the slope was. It was really disorientating. Anyway, the other thing that happened as I dropped down the mountain is the icy slopes gave way to softer, deeper snow and I was losing my footing with the crampons on down big uh, big holes so it was time to get the snowshoes back on and that allowed me to descend a lot quicker. They really were a godsend and worked absolutely brilliantly. I was probably going at five times the pace as I was when I was creeping down the hole in the whiteout conditions. And when I finally did get below the cloud level, it was great to be able to see the van and the glen below me. I wasn't far away from that cup of tea and the warmth of the van now. Oh, right. Oh, that's me back in the van, as you can see, and it's kind of horrible, sleety, hailstony rain down here. But anyway, that was good fun. Although it was pretty manky, um, my mental health certainly feels a lot better. I feel good for being out in the out in the hill. And another thing that I'd probably like to say is that, you know, it's... it's it's kind of, some people say it's an easy hill, but there's no easy hills when it's in these conditions in winter in Scotland. I got pretty serious towards the top. Uh, I needed to get an ice axe and crampons out. It was proper whiteout conditions. I couldn't see further than my feet um, for long spells. Uh, so, yeah, just bear that in mind. If, if you're reading the books, that uh, the Monroe book that I've got suggests that it takes about an hour and 20 minutes to get to the top from here, and that's in summer conditions. It took me a lot longer and I, you know, if I didn't have the ice axe and crampons I'd have been in trouble. I would mean, have had to turn around, um, it would have been foolish to go out with it, up without them. So yeah, um, so I, I didn't really get much time to talk at the top because the weather was manky. I'm not, I'm not even sure if the footage is in, in focus, it's so hard to film in these conditions. 
But that's the Glen Shee Ski Centre. The Glen Shee is actually further down, it's sort of um, down past the Spittal. This is Glen Beg. And once you're up over past the Glen Shee Ski Centre, you drop down, I think it's Glen Clooney down towards Bray Mar. So, um, yeah, it's, it's lovely. I'm about an hour away from home, so it was a quick fix, but it's done the job. Feel great. Um, so, yeah. I've had my cup of tea and my scotch egg and I'm going to sign off here so thanks very much for watching and um, stay safe out there. See you on the next adventure, right? Time to get down the road.